Jesus the shepherd because he is our, the good father, the one that takes care of us. He's the one that gives us freedom. He's the one that, that gives us the life that we want, but we don't even know that we need. The life that we really, really need, but we just don't understand how we're going to get there. We ask for many things, but Jesus already has the life for us. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus said this, the thief comes only to steal and kill, destroy. I, Jesus, is saying, came that day that you and I may have life and have it abundantly. Verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own and my own know me. How many of you can say amen to that? Let us pray. God, we pray. Speak to us, Jesus. We need you today more than ever. God, for those that are celebrating Father's Day in so many different ways, Lord, we pray for them. God, for those that are celebrating Juneteenth, Lord, in, in so many different ways, Lord, we pray that your freedom will continue to maintain, God, that we will continue to stand for justice, that we will continue to stand for freedom in, your, in you, Father, and freedom, God, in everything that we do. Jesus, thank you for being our shepherd. Just show yourself again in our lives, Lord. We need you today no more than ever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Man, it's such a beautiful statement that Jesus makes when he says, I am the good shepherd. And he is telling us the importance of understanding what, who he is to us. He is not somebody that is hired to do a job. He's somebody that chose to be here for us. He chose to be the God that will give himself for us. It was a willing love, agape love, for God so agape the cosmos. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, so God so agape the cosmos. It's a love that is chosen. It's a love that picks out of many. It's a, it's, it's a voluntary love, and there ain't no love like that. Anything that you have to be forced to do, then it's a problem. Anything that you do because somebody forced you to do, you're always going to have a problem with it. I'm telling you because, you know, I have a son. And he's eight, about to be nine in six months. And he's growing up. And my wife and I, she's teaching the kids today. We're sad because he's growing up. Some of you already dads of older kids, right? You know what he did today, this week, Brother Ken? He gave us his toys, man. He said, here are my toys. And we're like, what? Why? They need another home. That's what Toy Story does to kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's like, no. I'm like, what? really? But you know what comes with that too is that his mom called him for something this morning. And he was like, okay, I'm coming. You know, like he's doing these little things, right? Can anybody help him rebuke some demons in the name of Jesus? But you know what's going on with that. Like, you know, as you do things that you don't really want to do, there's no joy in that. So the shepherd, anybody, you could give your life to anybody. Ain't nobody going to take care of you like Jesus will take care of you. You can give your life to anything. And, and Jesus, and right there in John 10, please go and read this as part of your devotional tomorrow morning. Or tonight as you go down to sleep because you're going to see the dichotomy, the, the, for, the war, the, the force that is always against us. The enemy is trying to steal. He's trying to destroy you and me. And I don't know if you felt that. I don't know if you felt that fight in verse 1010. 10. I didn't put it there, but it's there. I want to make sure that you know that there's a fight and the enemy wants to destroy, destroy and steal. Not right here. There you go. The thief only comes to steal and kill. And destroy, but he came to give us life in abundance. And he came to be the good shepherd. But he doesn't send somebody that's hired to do the job. How many of you love the job that you do? 
How many of you have been in a job that you don't really love it much? You just got to do it for the paycheck. How many times did you look at the clock? How many times did you dread the client coming in? How many times, you know, like you got paid. I remember I was in college. I actually like this job, but I'll tell you what I didn't like about it. I was in college, my second job in college. I was going to Rutgers, Newark. And I, they put me in the student center. So the idea for that is information. But I didn't like when people came to ask for information because I was there doing my homework. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, was, I was trying to get time to do my homework and do my readings for chemistry that, you know, I didn't want to really do it or biology, whatever class I failed in Rutgers. I can't remember. You know, one of those classes that you, I, I just wasn't going for that. But when people came and I was actually there because they paid me to do that, I was like, oh, you know, here goes another student. There's law. You know what I'm like? You, you dread doing the job that you paid to do because it's not something that you love. But when you're doing something that you love, you're part of our own money. You want to invest. When you're teachers, that's why teachers invest so much in the students. That's why a lot of people in nursing invest in their, stu- in, in their patients. You know, doctors, the people that really love when you love what you do. There's nothing. They, could, they, they don't even have to pay you. And I thank God for that. So Jesus is telling us that. Listen, I'm not sending you to somebody that's hired. I came to be the good shepherd. He connects this with the Hebrew Bible. And in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 15, look at this, what Jesus tells us today. I myself we be, will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak and the fat and strong. I will destroy and I will feed them in justice. Come on. Jesus is bringing these motifs that are, are, are a representation that we are the sheep, that we are children of God, that we are people that we need God. He's trying to bring us to that realization that, listen, you are sheep. I am the shepherd. In reality, Jesus wasn't giving us a compliment. Sheep are not the most, like, smart animals. They don't have any defense mechanism. They cannot bark. Trust me, I know because my first role when I was playing at church for Christmas, when I was five years old, they asked me to be a sheep with the shepherds. And I studied my role very well. I was five years old, five years old. And the only thing they just bad, you know, like, that's it. There's no barking. There's nothing, you know, they're not goats. They, they just don't, they, they're just dumb animals. They're helpless unless they have a good shepherd. They're domesticated animals that give a lot. They're domesticated animals that help to, to, to you know, the, the house. It gives you wool. It gives you a lot of uh, uh, great, great things. But they're helpless without a good shepherd. And God uses that, that, that um, comparison, compares us and says, you are my sheep. Because those are parents, those that have dealt with children, you know how helpless they are. They're human beings. They're not going to be helpless forever. You see, you know, I'm, pray for me. I'm about to be 40 this year. We're about to celebrate this on September, for real. We're going to do something good. But, but I'm, I'm praying. Thank you for the, I don't know. That clap was like, bro, you're, old. I don't know. I'll take, I'll take it. I'll take, I'll take the motivation. But I'll tell you this much. I'm analyzing a lot, and I'm like, man, you know, not every kid is going to be a kid forever. Here I am having conversations about, you know, I became the pastor of this church about eight, nine years ago. You know what I'm saying? And then when, when we understood what, what the new vision of the church had to be, we, we, we understood the liberty was something that fit, fit in what we wanted to do. But here I am thinking about how is my father going to be till the day that he passed away, right? Like we're thinking about, you know, how my grandma and she passed away. And now you're thinking about not just when you were a kid, you're thinking about older people. But when you're young, nobody thinks that you're going to be old one day. The Bible does tells us in John 21, it tells you, hey, listen, now you're walking. One day they're going to walk you. So be careful where you actually sowing because you're going to reap what you sow. So when a child is helpless, you know that. They're not going to be helpless forever. But they're like sheep that need shepherd, that need pasturing. 
And let me get to you and just stop for a second in the rest of the time that I have in one of the biggest and most known Bible passages in the world. Everybody knows this, Psalms 23. But there's a couple of things that I found out in just studying this, connecting it with Jesus saying he's the shepherd that I want to bring it to you. Hopefully it blesses you as well. Psalms 23, 1 says, the Lord, can we read it together? Because it's a beautiful verse. I really encourage you to memorize it. Whatever language, memorize it. It will help you when you're older to memorize the word of God. When you're about to go to surgery, you cannot take anything and you can just remember the word of God. Nobody can take that away of you, from you. Anybody seen the book of Eli? I know it's an older mo movie. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but just think about that. You know what I'm saying? Memorize the word of God. And it says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Say with me again. All the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm not going to stop in the last two verses. It's going to take too long. I leave Pastor Dave to do that some other time. But I want to stop in the first verses with you. The Lord is my shepherd. Read it with me one more time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. My God, what a beautiful green pastures. What an amazing place to be. Well, you can see that grass. I don't know if you like that, but I enjoy that. Going to any of the parks here, as long as, you know, I check there's no, you know, you know, um, pet doodle, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? But you can just lie down in the pasture and the grass and enjoy the smell and, and just, just, just be in that moment. It's beautiful. You know what's the, the problem with this Bible verse? That this is what I thought. This is what you and I think when we think about green pastures, right? That's what I think. You know, when David was speaking about green pastures, he was talking about this. I see some of your faces like, that's green pasture. How is that green pasture? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Because I'm like, where's, where's the grass? Like, where's the grass? You see it, right? But that ain't this. You see, we live in the land where we have so much, and the water is everywhere, and the grass is everywhere. And it's, it's a burden, like, oh, I'm on the, like, you know, it's a burden. But in Israel, you get two months of this, two months out of the year of that kind of green. So that is the same mountains that then become this to the sheep. And I remember as I was reading and reading and researching, I remembered I was able to go with my wife to Israel one time. And I re did remember the Bedouins, the people, the shepherd. And, I, and I'm like, well, they're there, but I don't see any grass. And I see sheep and they're walking. And I never made the connection where were they getting any grass, any food. And this is exactly the point of the Lord is my shepherd, I, my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures. This I don't need a God if I have that. I don't need a God if this is what's all around me. I need a good shepherd to find me some green grass when I'm going through that desert. Is anybody with me right now? Is that anybody with me right now? See, because that changes the whole perspective. I know this Bible verse itself as a young kid. But when I understood that this is the green pasture, because this is what's going to spring out from the desert, that is the green pasture that's going to come out. And you and I cannot see it. But the shepherd that is good, 
He knows where it is. The shepherd that is good will find it and look for it and take advantage in the green times. The two months, they're going to take advantage. They're going to store some stuff. But there's other months that there's nothing that will give you the, 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 the food. But you see, these are real pictures of, of sheep actually looking for the food. They need the shepherd. And this is what David is saying. A psalm of David, it says, so he is calling out and saying, listen, the Lord is my shepherd. I need him daily. As a baby needs a mom and dad to be raised well, as a baby needs somebody to take care of them, that's the same way you and I need God. The problem is not you going to God one day and meeting him. How many times have you known people that meet Jesus and then they get lost in their way? Because this is a daily perk. I wish I could eat one time forever. I've tried it when I go to the buffets. And it doesn't work. Because at 6 p.m. I'm hungry again. And now i got to recalibrate my brain and be like, man, Lipe, you got to start eating better. I got a coach for that. And it's kicking my butt this week. Because it's not how much can you eat. It's can you depend on your God to guide you. Not just daily, but almost hourly. Not just hourly, sometimes minute by minute. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Sometimes there are days that you're like, man, you got to hold on to God for your dear life. Because you know it's going to be tough. So what God is calling us to do is, listen, he's going to lead us to the green pastures. We want this. This is what we want. We want the lush, we want the green, we want stuff that is a lot. So that way I can be like, God, I don't really need you. Give me all the money that I need right now. I'll be all right. I'll take care of myself. And God is saying, I, I, I can't do that. Because that's why pride comes in. That's why many of us, we lean ourselves in, in our own. And Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding because he's the one that's going to lead us. What is he going to lead us? He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I think it's so amazing, this picture, because if you see the mountain, can you see the ridges? Can you see, like, the little things there, like little lines? Where did that come from? That actually comes from the sheep eating time and time again. And a good shepherd will take care of this. A good shepherd will walk them in a straight line. A good shepherd will guide them in that path. It's not a path that has food everywhere. It's a path that has to be consistent because there are provision for a specific time, for a specific season. And if they're not moving according to the voice of the shepherd, they're going to stay behind. We need to go back to hear the voice of the shepherd. We got to understand that we are babies in God's hands. That we need to go back to that simple love. We have been you know, influenced and our hearts have been hardened by the craziness of the world the past three years. I could say amen to that. I don't know if you can. Because there's a lot of things that my heart has gone like, nah, man, those people are crazy. I'm not going to be around them. Or there's so much divisiveness and there's so many things that we don't really want to hear God's voice. And many people doubt God's existence and his voice because they're looking at other voices. And God is telling us, listen, I am your shepherd. I will guide you in the straight path. But you got you, you, you to gotta listen to the voice of, of the shepherd. You can't just be on your own on this. So that's why the second thing that it's telling us is, listen... Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. This is the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death. When the sun is setting in the desert, these alleys, these canyons, they become dark. And the sheep, they don't know, they're just going. And walls will stay there and wait to take the prey, to take the sheep, to take them out. 
It is the shepherd that takes care of them in the spots where they cannot see. There might be a dog with them. The dog is behind trying to push them. The shepherd is ahead looking for what's the evil things that will come against them. So God is before us. The path, I will follow what you tell me. Your voice, I will listen. And now he is fighting for us against the evil one. How does he do that? Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here's a rod, here's a staff. Rod is relatively short. Heavy club-like, it's a defense weapon. The rod, is, the staff is longer, it's thinner, has a hook, a crook at the end, and it's there for a reason. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. Listen, you got a sheep that is walking in this hilly um, terrain, and it's about to fall. And, and, and the shepherd takes the rod and guides them right in the path. The sheep are part of the herd, but sometimes the sheep, they get off the, the path that has been laid out for them. How many of you sometimes feel a little lost? You see, what God is telling us is this, that he will guide us with his rod, I mean with his staff. He will push us in sometimes. What does that mean? Well, that's going to mean that he's going to have to discipline us sometimes. I never like disciplining my kids. Remember that saying, it's going to hurt me more than will hurt you. And then my mind always thought about, well, mom, why don't you hit yourself first, right? Like, <laughs> right? No. Well, tell me this much. I remember. I hope you remember. Do you remember the time where... If my, was, my mom spanked me. She's Puerto Rican. My dad's Dominican. He's a little more calmed down. That was just hit the way that, that my family dynamics dealt. My dad will give you long meetings and a lot of talk. And sometimes it would be more like, okay, mom, just hit me because I, I just want to go play. Like, 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 so it got to a point where you were old enough. I remember like, I was old enough. And I was like, it's not going to hurt, so go ahead. You follow what I'm saying? There's not abuse, but there was that, that rod in the house, right? You know what I'm talking about? I'll tell you this much, we don't like the rod. It don't matter if it's a meeting, family meetings, I hated family meetings. And my, my father was going to ask us, like, why I said a bad word to my sister. I was like, because she was annoying me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, there was things that were happening. Like, we don't like the rod. You know what the Bible says? In Hebrews 12, 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. How many of you thank people, mentors, mom, dad, that helped you to get you in the straight and now? How many of you thank for them for that? Do you hear that voice sometimes? You're like, they're not around you, but you hear that voice like, hey, be careful. Hey, choose right. Hey, do this. You know, you hear that. It's not pleasant at the beginning. I don't like it. But if my kids, if, if I let my kids be kids, they'll be eating McDonald's every day. Candy every day. It's s'more season. They will be eating s'mores every day. But because I know better, better as their father, as their shepherd, what do I want to do? I want to protect them. I want them to have the best life. So I will guide them with direction. Sometimes with the little rod. Just never, never lay hand on anybody when you are very, very mad and angry. But there are moments that I have to tell my daughter, hey, I, I told you, right? So here it comes. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And she, listen, it's like this, like that. But what hurts them is that they know. They know. They know. There's, there's that conviction in there. How many, of you, how many of you have felt that from God many times? See, the problem is that we don't see it how David sees it. This is what he sees. Your rod, what? Comforts me. How in the world? Because we know that they care. 
When somebody tells you something, trust me, it's because they care about you. When somebody gives you an advice, somebody that you trust gives you an advice, it's because they really care. If they don't care, they're not going to talk. So do I like when people critique me, when they criticize me, when they tell me things? I don't like it. But at the end, I appreciate it. Because I'd rather you tell me my face than me hearing that, wow, I thought we had trust. And then I hear somebody else, like, oh, you know, so-and-so is speaking this about you. Do you agree with me? So you see, sometimes that rod is not going to feel well, but God is telling us, listen, I am the good shepherd. I want to come for you through that. Because at the end of the day, he also has a staff. And the staff is there not for us. See, the rod is there to guide. The rod, this, I, I'm sorry, I wrote it wrong. The staff, the rod is there to fight. For the enemies that come against us, when the wolves that come against us, the shepherd is trying to fight for us. And this is a beautiful, beautiful verse, Psalms 3.3. It says, but you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my, face, of my head. Can you read this one with me once again? But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Can you lift up your head when you read that? Because I know every time I'm ashamed, what do I do? Put my head down. When I know I did something wrong and I have a conversation and I got to face that person, whether it's my supervisor, whether it's my wife, whether it's my parents, whether I see it with my kids and they know that there's something is wrong, what do you do? You put your head down. But when there's a, somebody that fights for you, when there's somebody that advocates for you, when there's somebody that sees the, the, the problem and fights for you, you could lift up your head. You could be at peace because you know that he's fighting for you. So let me tell you this. God's rod and his staff will come for us every day of our lives. The good shepherd guides. The good shepherd speaks. And the sheep, they listen. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I'm here to protect you. I'm here to love on you. I'm here to be with you. The question is, are we going to follow? Are we going to continue to be with him daily? To know that he's going to guide us into the beautiful green pastures. It may not be very noticeable to us. But Jesus will guide us every day to where we need to go. Listen, I pray that... As you leave this place, you'll be more convinced about the power of God in your life. And how God is guiding you and leading you. Because many times we want God to give us the next big, big thing. And you know what God is trying to do in our lives? He's trying to say, hey, are you looking? Are you noticing how he's already guiding you? Are you looking how he's already giving you that path? It doesn't look straight, but it's there, and it's there for you. It may not look, you know, the way that we want it, but it's there. You may want more, but God is saying, I'm going to give you not what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. And when you, we see God working, there are things that God has been doing in my lives in the past years that I'm like, only God could do this because I'm not even that smart. I'm not even that that bright. I, can't, I, can't, I, wasn't be, I would never be able to do no strategic plan in the world will be able to do that. And God does it for us. So church, please stand with me and let us pray. Because as we close out, I just want you to take the word of God, deposit it in your heart, and ask the good shepherd just to walk with you and be with you. The good shepherd, he's going to guide you to green pastures. Are you ready for the green pastures? It's going to be rocky. It's going to be rocky. Well, he got you. It's going to be a little bit crooked, but he got you. There might be wolves and, and predators, but he's fighting for us. Pray this prayer of dependence with me. And pray, Jesus, that, that he will just take your will. And just as Jesus prayed, that we could pray the same way. Jesus, you're the good shepherd, so not my will be done, but your will be done. Not my timeline be done, but your timeline be done. Lord, once again, 
We're praying, God, that you become the good shepherd in our lives. If we have not really given ourselves completely to you, God, I pray that we'll be able to do it. I pray, God, that you help us to really connect with you in a way that only you can. Lord, help us, help us to be the good sheep that listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow. God, I know I've gone astray. So let your rod and your staff, let them comfort me. Because I know that whatever battles I'm going through, you know who's fighting? You're fighting for me. You're fighting for me. Can you say, thank you, Jesus, for fighting my battles. Thank you, Jesus, for fighting my battles. I deposit again my will, Lord, my anxieties, all the things, the dreams that I have, everything is laid on right in front of your hands, God, and I just give it up to you. Lord, I am your child. You are my father. I need you today more than ever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Church, we want to close out once again saying thank you for being a support to Liberty Church. Um, every time we close, we always tell if you're here new, don't feel ever forced to, to give to Liberty. We want you to know that everything that God has done for us is always free. But we as a church, when we are committed somewhere, you know, we, we want to invest in the place that God is helping us to grow. Amen. So there's a simple way of doing it. It's a Tithely app. If you go to libertychurch.org, libertychurchjc.org, there's a, a link there. Take care of that as well. Um, and then whatever information you may need, we want to make sure that you know that everything that we invest, it continues to grow in the work that we do in our community to support the work of God here and through us. So um, we're going to be also pretty soon letting you know all the different things that we were able to do. Um, today's not going to be the day for that. But um, we're really thankful for those that have already said yes, are committing themselves to support what God is doing here through Liberty. So once again, thank you. And let me pray us out as we close today. Reminding you again, dads, please, um, the gift is one for, for each of the members. So we have some people that may not be here, but we got you in our list. And um, there's always something to share downstairs. So please don't rush out. Connect with people. And once again, happy Father's Day. Let us pray. God, we thank you. Lord, we just adore you, Father, for who you are and what you've done in our lives. Lord, as we go today, Lord, as we celebrate dads or if we're just home or whatever we may be doing, celebrating Juneteenth, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you help us to connect with you, to continue to know, Father, you are my good shepherd. So guide me. Fight for us, Father. There's a lot of people that are battling, Lord, different things. The enemy is always ready to destroy and steal and, and just... Just come and, and, and rob us from all the things, all the joy that you've given us. Father, but help us to remain in you, to connect with you, to be with you always. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.